One of the cool things about creating your own responsive presentation is that not only can you take advantage of things that the user already expects, like using the arrow keys that they would find in a PowerPoint presentation, but scaling down to devices, you can take advantage of other expectations, like swipe gestures. So let's go ahead and add a swipe library and wire up the swipe gestures to the navigation we already have. So let's start by going into the Chapter 3 folder, 0303, Start folder and JS and open the pres.js file. We're going to be adding more code inside our ready function to handle the swipe. But first, let's download the library and make sure that library is incorporated in our project. So there's a couple different libraries you can use. The one we're going to use in this case is Touch Swipe. If you don't have access to the exercise files, just do a search for jQuery and then Touch Swipe, all one word. And we want this minimized, this minified file. If you do have access to the exercise files, you can grab a copy from this JS folder. I'm just going to select that, copy it, and paste it into the JS folder that we're actively working on. So we're going to then reference this minified file. So I'm going to go back to the finder here and open the index.html file in Dreamweaver. So we want to add another script tag. We want to make sure that it is available before our pres.js file. So let's add it after jQuery because it also relies on jQuery. So I'm going to add this script tag. I'm going to set the source. And let's go ahead and just browse for the source and select that jQuery library. Click Open. There it is. Let's close the tag and save the index.html file. I'm going to switch over to prez.js, and let's start adding this code. Now, this code is kind of a long chunk, and it's a little bit complicated. So if you're worried about making mistakes or you'd rather just copy and paste it, you can grab it from the snippets file in this video's exercise folder. So let's call the jQuery function again. This time, we're going to look for that slides container. So we want to detect any swipes that happen on the container that holds all the slides. And the syntax for this is that we then call this swipe function. And then we pass in the parameters that we're going to use. So this touch swipe library is rather advanced. There's a lot of features in it that you may want to play with on your own. But for right now, we're just going to do a real simple implementation. So we're going to open up this object with a curly bracket. And for this swipe property, it's going to be a function. And we're going to type out all of the parameters from the documentation, but we're only going to use one of them for right now. You can, of course, take advantage of more of them on your own. First one's event, and then direction, distance. These are all separated by commas. And duration, and finger count. And then we're going to close that parenthesis and open a curly bracket. And I'm just going to hit another line to return, close the curly bracket, and I'm going to close the other curly bracket and also close this parenthesis here and end the line with a semicolon. So here we want to detect for what direction that the user has swiped. So we're going to add a switch statement. And again, you could use if else if you prefer with this. It's really up to you. So we want to switch on that direction. We're going to add two cases. You can look for up, down if you like, but in this case, let's just look for left and right. So we've got case, left, and then a colon. I'm going to tab in. And so if that's the case, let's go ahead and call that next slide. And then we're going to break after that so no other code gets executed. And we're going to go back a tab and write a second case. This one's going to be to the right and a colon. And then I'm going to tab in and say back if the user happens to swipe to the right. And then we're going to break again, and we should be all good. Looks like I've already got a closing bracket there that Dreamweaver added for me, so that should be all in place. So this might seem a bit counterintuitive that our swipe gestures effectively work in the opposite direction of our key events. And the reason that is because when I say if I click to the right of finger count here and I drag to the left. The motion, you think of it as maybe effectively throwing the current screen away. So in a left to right culture of kind of reading English, you know, finger count comes after direction, for instance. So 
as I'm pushing things forward, suppose this selection is my viewfinder, finger count comes into view, and that's a later item than, say, direction. So as I swipe to the left, I'm moving forward. If I swipe to the right, I'm kind of going back in space. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but something to think about. And of course, if you add up or down, you're going to find the same thing there. Let's switch back to the finder and open up the corresponding index.html file in my browser. And now in addition to the arrow keys working, if I click and drag, I should be able to swipe to the next screen. There we go. And it works if I go backwards too. All right, we're going a long way towards having a responsive presentation and that we are dealing with the medium of the touchscreen. So the next chapter, we're going to modify the CSS to also take advantage of the different options on different screens.